Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much for joining. Once again, last time we had a very stimulating and thought-proving discussion about, about the centrality of Varanashram. In that's, what it, that, that's what it came to be. That wasn't yes. what was planned, I guess. But Yes, that is true. But that I think was it was an important free. topic. Anyway. Yeah. Let's accept the need to follow Srila Prabhupada's order regarding the impl implementation of Varanashram Dharma. That's, that should be the first thing. Prabhupada did talk a lot about Varanashram, but Prabhupada also engaged during his uh, manifest presence women in various ways in which was not done in Varanashram. Say, for example, he had women going out to distribute books and approach unknown men and talk with them and persuade them. So Prabhupada engaged uh, devotees in various ways. And to consider that the engagements he did, uh, he provided that time where like emergency services or emergency instructions and that what Prabhupada gave somewhere else, maybe in his books, those are his standard instructions. Did Prabhupada actually... No, uh, well, not maybe in his books, very clearly. No no no, 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 no. The point is that both came from Prabhupada to say that one is emergency and one is standard. This is almost like Shankaracharya saying that some instructions in the Vedas are... In the Veda, Vedas are are actually the Mahavakya and everything else is Laghuvakya. And he uses his own hermeneutic to decide which is Mahavakya and which is Laghuvakya. So similarly, I mean, everybody, this could lead to hermeneutical chaos in our moment. Everybody can decide which is emergency and which is not emergency. So is there any basis in Prabhupada's words for classifying some of his instructions in emergency and some as, as standard? Okay, well, let me read to you from... Srila Prabhupada's purport to the Bhagavatam, chap, uh, sorry, Canto 7, Chapter 11, Text 17, uh, in which he refers to the term emergency. Srila Prabhupada wrote therein, At the present moment, society is in a chaotic condition, and everyone has given up the cultivation of spiritual life, which is especially meant for the brahmanas. Because spiritual culture has been stopped all over the world, there is now an emergency, and therefore it is now time to train those who are considered lower and condemned so that they may become brahmanas and take up the work of spiritual progress. The spiritual progress of human society has been stopped, and this should be considered an emergency. So Srila Prabhupada considered that he was working within an emergency situation and that persons who are considered lower and condemned, which would not, not, he's giving the idea that the normally they wouldn't become brahmanas, but they they have taken up the work. Srila Prabhupada um, in that meeting with the GBC when Srila Prabhupada was He'd called the GBC from over the, all over the world to meet him. And they had questions, any final questions. One of the things they asked was about the composition of the GBC. This May the 28th, 1977 in Vrindavan, Srila Prabhupada said about the GBC members, they must all be ideal, acharya-like. In the beginning, we have done for working. Now we should be, be very cautious. We have done for we've done many things for working. Now we should be very, very, very cautious. Now, the very fact that Srila Prabhupada wanted to institute Varnashram Dharma means that there would be many differences. Uh, what was required to start a, a spiritual movement in the West in an emergency isn't necessarily going to be the basis for our social system for the future. Not that we're always living in an emergency mode. Um, I'm reading, oh, there's Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know, Kuladri Prabhu, who was at New Vrindavan. He said that Srila Prabhupada spoke to him about the future of our movement and farms. And he said that um, Kuladri Prabhu said he got the impression that it would be a very different movement, that it would be farm-based, 
it would be family based, uh, Varnashram based. Srila Prabhupada said to Rameshwar Swami that millions will join our farms. So that is a, a very different second phase of the movement from the monastic beginning where everyone just let's get out there and do the needful. We've got to change the world. But when the world is changed, you can't live all your life and develop a society on the basis of being in a constant state of emergency. Essentially, what you're saying is that uh, Prabhupada, towards the end of his life, in, there are a series of quotes which you end of his manifest presence with us. He seems to have emphasized more strongly a particular way of functioning. And that involves, uh, involves like many of the quotes you said, Prabhupada was approving co-education before, but then later he said no. So what you are saying is that what Prabhupada said later, now the one quote which you gave was that, which Prabhupada says we are operating in an emergency. And then later on, in seven, later on quotes are saying that Prabhupada is saying, now we have tried various things. Now we should be cautious. So when you are saying that we should be cautious, so you are inferring that what he's saying in the context of being cautious is what he wanted as the standard after the movement, after uh, in the later phases of your movement. So if so, the my question. Well, no, no, ex exactly what you uh, read into that. That, that could be interpreted in various ways. But Srila Prabhupada did, what I'm saying is that you're asking, why do you think there's going to be a difference before and after? But Srila Prabhupada said that so far we have done for working, now we should be cautious. So Srila Prabhupada is saying that we have been very open and very liberal, but now we should be more cautious. I'm just saying okay. this indicates a change that Srila Prabhupada wanted to tighten up. And actually, even from even from early in the movement, Srila Prabhupada is saying we should boil the milk. Uh, he spoke yeah. about Varnashram College when he saw that so many of his disciples were falling down. For the Varnashram College, uh, he also said that should be for men, not for women. Uh, so... The, and he said there should be a Varnashram College at every one of our ISKCON centers. Okay. So we are talking about a, a change that has never been instituted and agreed it's going to be difficult to institute. Yeah. But it wouldn't be so difficult if we first of all accepted that this is what Srila Prabhupada wanted and then work to how to implement it instead of just trying to pretend it's not there or... No, that I mean, people want, won't like it or, or whatever. There are many areas in which our movement needs to work. And what, to say that uh, nobody is actually, uh, the, the reason why we're having this podcast is we are trying to, at least I'm trying to understand how we could do it. So, okay. So that's all right. Now, the second point so the emergency has increased. So, just as Prabhupada had accommodations when the emergencies were there. So even today, we need to have accommodations to attract new people. Prabhupada, even Prabhupada had to do some adjustments. Prabhupada had to do some emergency things. So in that sense, the emergency is there and it's even greater today, internally as well as externally. So in society, as in the broader society, as well as in our society. So the emergency operations also need to keep going on. Does that, what, do you mean uh, within, what do you mean within our society? Well, our movement is highly depleted. In the West, if there were no Indians, there were practically no Krishna consciousness movement in America and UK. Not much, yeah. Yeah, so in that sense, there is both an internal emergency and Prabhupada's vision was very clear that he wanted in the Western, in the rest of the world, local people to come, not just Indians to come. So, sure. okay, well, Srila Prabhupada said that book distribution and farms are our solid programs that can change the whole world. When it was, there were rumors that book distribution would stop, Srila Prabhupada wrote, whoever told you that is a rascal saying it in my name, I never said that. Rather, the Sankirtan movement will expand, continuing so long as we are sincere. 
when I came in the beginning, I began to expand it and now it is going on and there is no question of it stopping. Therefore, go on with your lifetime plans, making secure in distributing of books. There is no cessation. This movement is eternal. So massive book distribution. Srila Prabhupada said book distribution and farms are our programs that can change this world. Srila, I'm giving some quotes from Srila Prabhupada. Um, yes, so, sorry, this book, I'm sorry. How is this an answer to the question? So my question. Because this is this is what. My question. More was, than make my, my the point I'm making here uh, is that sorry, from sorry. what I read from these statements of Srila Prabhupada, more than making social adjustments, we have to promote book distribution and farms, and this will this will change the world. That's the. Srila Prabhupada didn't stress so much that we have to make social adjustments, but he said. If this book distribution is managed properly, pushed on with great enthusiasm and determination at the same time, if our men keep spiritually strong, then the whole world will become Krishna conscious. If we introduce these books in all the bookstores, schools, colleges, libraries, and everyone's home, our religion will be the only religion in the world very soon. This prediction has been made publicly here in one newspaper by a Japanese philosopher that within 10 years, Krishna consciousness will be the world religion. If you all keep preaching in such a pure way, this will undoubtedly prove true. And then another major factor for worldwide success, Srila Prabhupada said, on these farms, we can de demonstrate the full Varnashram system. If these farms become successful, then the whole world will be enveloped by Krishna consciousness. So the, the point I'm making here is that on these, oh, I, actually some more quotes. If we simply repeat this philosophy exactly as it is, Srila Prabhupada said, without any misrepresentation or, or adulteration, then this movement will never be checked and we will conquer the world. We stand on our Krishna philosophy and it, because it has the full potency of Krishna himself, there is no limit to the effect it will have upon the world if we remain sincere and convinced for spreading this philosophy purely. So we can say that we're not spreading the movement because we haven't adjusted to the Western ethos. But the emphasis that Srila Prabhupada gave was on the, the programs themselves of massive book distribution, and of establishing farms to demonstrate Varnashram. Srila Prabhupada said that people would join our farms in their millions, at least that's quoted from Rameshra Swami at the time. And it is feasible that if we did have farms operating as Srila Prabhupada wanted, that people would be looking to us because there are so many people looking for solutions mm -hmm. the, to the whole disorganized and horrible society that's going on in the world. We would be able to, to if we had done, as Srila Prabhupada said, and presented uh, society with four varnas, four ashrams, specific roles, gender roles, we'd be able to show it and say it strongly without having to try to adjust to the to the present Western ethos. If we adjust to the present Western ethos, uh, then we may have to adjust again in 10 or 20 years because it's always changing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, yes, Maharaj. Yeah, okay, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah. Say something. now the word adjustment has an, a strong negative connotation sometimes in our movement, but adjustment is just a part of life. Prabhupada couldn't have spoken in Bengali in America. He spoke yeah. in English. Prabhupada engaged men and women in different services. No, I don't. I don't see that adjust has so, got so, such so a bad. in that sense, I don't see that adjust has got such okay. a bad So, so I, I got I got the answer through a question uh, that to my question that you said no matter how acute the emergency is, what you are saying is Prabhupada said that book distribution and farms will attract people. So independent of the external internal emergency, this could be uh, this itself if we had done it effectively, that could have attracted people. So let's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let's move forward. Uh, well, th that that should be our poll star. That's that's my point. Okay. First of all, let's see what Srila Prabhupada's plans are, and work to affect them. And within that, we can 
adjust here, this way, that way, and the other way. But first of all, let's see what Srila Prabhupada's program is. And if we do that, then Yasya Deve Parabhatya Yata Deve Tatagoro Tasyaite Pratita Hyata Prakashante Mahatmanaha. Then Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, they'll give us the intelligence to do it. But if we avoid these programs, thankfully book distribution is going on, but the, the yes. program to for Varnashram and farms is practically dropped, unfortunately. So we should bring this back to the forefront. Please speak. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Oh, oh, something else I should say. I was just started that. That we, what is that? That's the saying. You probably know this one. Uh, I don't know who, orig, who it's originally attributed to. That, what is it? The, the church that marries the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times, will yeah. be a widow tomorrow. Who said that? Who's that attributed to? I thought you might know that one. Heard that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the spirit of the times changes all the time. Uh, so is it G.K. Chesterton? It is. I don't. I really don't know. Quite possibly. Okay. Quite William, possibly. He was quite a. He was quite it. a. He was quite a character. I mean, he's quite a, quite a formidable theologist, wasn't he? Theologian. It's theologist. Really, yeah, it's really important. Hmm? It's William Ralph Ing. I just Googled. You did? Okay. Okay. So. I never heard of him. Now, if we consider that farms were attempted to some extent during Prabhupada's times, and our attempts to, say, uh, replicate uh, some, some things, they did lead to, so they did lead to significant problems. If you consider yes. you an experiment yes. or other places. So it I mean, is it that just we didn't want to do? Is it? I don't think it's out of defiance to Prabhupada uh, that we didn't want to do Varanashram. It is just that there were a lot of problems in that. And the problems, say, for example, you say they have faith in the Guru and Krishna. Many parents with great faith in Guru and Krishna send their children to Gurukuls, maybe thousands of miles away. And those children were abused and terribly abused. And many parents had their daughters, especially in New Vrindavan, married at the age of 14, 15. And not one of those marriages has survived. Not one of those girls is even a devotee now. So attempts have... Is that a fact? Yeah, that's, I'm, I've asked several leaders in the movement who are associated with New Vrindavan. Not one of them is even practicing bhakti right now. So those who had those... No, not at any level. They're all, they're all meat eaters and they're all have no interest in Krishna consciousness whatsoever. Well, I mean, it depends on how we define Krishna consciousness. Certainly, they don't want to associate with the movement. They may, they may worship Krishna privately. We don't know. But they, have, uh, definitely are a, they definitely have such bad experiences that they don't, want to be a, uh, they don't want to be a part, associate with the movement right now. So, so the, ex, the attempts were made and uh, there were quite serious problems. So there were, there's an ethos where women were told to be completely submissive to men. And there has been domestic violence. We know a particular leader of the movement, he publicly said on American television that yes, just as you whip horses, you should beat women to discipline them. And really? Who said I, that? Bhakti pa, Kirtanan Swami. Same. So he quoted basically, I think Prabhupada quoted, uh, Prabhupada quoted uh, whom, uh, Tulsi Das, Tadam Ke Adhikari. Oh, yeah, yeah. So based on that, he quoted that. And uh, it, it has happened that there has been abuse and violence. So it is, so the question is that, like we say, once burnt, twice shy. So the attempts have been made and the attempts have, have had, had sometimes disastrous consequences. In fact, we could say that the entire Gulukul generation, we have maybe only a handful of young people who have become devotees. And others have had problems. So there are naturally some understandable reservations about going on a path which did lead to severe problems. So, so my question is that uh, instead of saying that we just rejected Prabhupada's instructions, you now how can we go ahead in such a way that we don't repeat the mistakes that happened in our own movement's history? Well, one way is to close down Krishna consciousness altogether. <laughs> 
<laughs> if we say, it's not just the Gurukul children, there, what's happening right now with our endeavors to preach Krishna consciousness outside India, especially, especially is that we make devotees and within we make devotees. That's a funny term. All right, we bring people to Krishna consciousness. They stay for some time and they go away again. So Hotra Swami used to call it the Iskon tube. They come in one end, they walk along a little bit and they fall out the other. And we have a huge number of devotees, people who are still devotees all over the world who are still practicing in some way or other, but they don't want to associate with Iskon. It, they may be, they may come to a Rathiatra or something. They don't want to come close. They, uh, they, they may affiliate with some Sri Vaishnav group or Goryamart group. It's part of a much bigger problem. Uh, possibly that is also because we haven't implemented Varnashram Dharma, that in which people can, we, we give scope for people to practice at different levels. But I'm just, I'm just saying, if we say that, well, Guru, Gurukul didn't work, so we should stop Gurukul. Well, we could say, well, maybe Krishna consciousness isn't working. No, no, Maharaj, so we I never should said stop that. Krishna consciousness. No, Maharaj, I never but said it, we should stop Gurukul. I never, mm. I never said that. I'm just saying that, say, for example, well, with, with respect to... Well, practically, it has stopped, hasn't it? Because the, 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 even in India, we, we, we're not promoting Gurukul. We're promoting basically the government syllabus schools, which Srila Prabhupada was so much against. Well, that's the, that's the main focus. Yeah, frankly, yeah. it is through those that modern education, we have got the best devotees in our second generation. Some of the most. Yeah, they, but they came from that to Krishna consciousness. Yes. Srila Prabhupada's aim was to have our own schools to save people from modern education. <laughs> that that's Srila Prabhupada's vision. Yeah. Now, um, no, okay. So we have made terrible mistakes, but still, Srila Prabhupada wanted us to establish Varnashram. He wanted us to have gurukuls. Another example we could say: book distribution went very wrong in the Western world. We corrected it, and we went forward. The guru system went terribly wrong, and some correction has been there. It's not as it's not as bad as it used to be. I hope we can say. Yes. If, if you want to say that, okay, well, marriage in the West, it's still a disaster. It's because so many of our devotees, they get married and then they divorce, but we don't stop it. We have to we have to continue course, with it and try and try and do it in such a way that it works. Yes, Maj, of course. Problems Definitely. are unavoidable. I mean, I'm not saying that we're not going to have problems. That, that Just by some magic wand, we just say the word Varnashram and then everything becomes tinsel. It's not like that. Yes, yes. Problems are unavoidable. Yes, there Maj. are going to be yeah, problems. Yeah. Even, in the, even in the best Varnashram system, maybe with the exception of Ayodhya at the time of Lord Ram, but uh, there, even in Krishna's Dwaraka, there was uh, Shatrajit, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, Maharaj. Human nature is Varnashram is a system to regulate human demoniac tendencies, you can say. Basically, we're all in this material world. Krishna Bhuli Seji Adi Bahi Muk. We're all away from Krishna. So it's a system to try to regulate our and and purify our love. Actually, the system itself doesn't do that. Krishna consciousness does that. Krishna consciousness is purifying, and the Varnashram system provides a, a framework for us to live because we're man is a social animal. We have to live in some society. Mm. But if we live in a society that's regulated according to Krishna's plan, uh, as far as possible, Srila Prabhupada said it's not possible to fully back, bring back the old system. But if we do that as far as possible, that will provide a kind of society which is conducive to hearing and chanting about and serving Krishna. Whereas the present society we have, as, as you rightly say, it's, it's getting worse day by day. As stated in the Bhagavatam, day by day things become worse. And the whole society is becoming, well, it, it is already hell, but it's becoming more and more hellish. 
and difficult to be Krishna conscious because you you have to live among people, materialistic people and just like if you go to the the karmi schools then the whole idea is how to make it become a materialistic success competitive spirit whereas varnashram works on cooperative there's so so many things implementing varnashram is a huge thing it's beyond our capacity but krishna can empower us if we i'm sure if we all get together and think Srila Prabhupada wanted this. Let's do what we have to do. And let's pray to Srila Prabhupada for the strength, the energy, consulting his instructions, how to implement them. By the way, one thing you're saying that that the farms are all of it all flopped and this and that. Okay, it's well, a complex okay. history, well, but if you, you, if you want to say something, okay. Yeah, sorry. All right. Sorry. So, I'm, I'm yeah, two things. On and See, on first there. of all, you know. But, but the points you're making, actually, they could be answered in a yeah, so, a so extensive I, I'm manner. Anyway, I, I, I'm not in any way uh, saying that we should not have farm communities. In fact, I'm in Govardhan Eco Village. And here, there is an Eco Village, and there's outreach, outreach happening elsewhere also from here. So I'm just, uh, my point is that when we tried it, there were some difficulties. Now we talk about say we had a, we had yeah, with respect to, no with respect to every system which we have tried we had problems so like we had said devotees coming and going out now we have created devotee care system so that devotees needs are taken care of if we have had problem with the guru system now we had we have had various measures taken care of by which the, the, so at least the system has become a little more we could say a little more robust we have had hadn't any major challenges with the gurus in the last decade or so or a little more than that. So we have worked towards improving things. So similarly, we can work towards improving Varanashram. In principle, that's perfectly fine. So all that I'm saying is... We have to start it first. Yeah. <laughs> then no, we can talk of improving it. <laughs> yeah. So my, my, my question is that in today's world, when we have a particular hierarchical structure, there is, because as you said, it's Kaliuga. So Kaliuga means there is a huge tendency to abuse power. After all, as you said, we are all demoniac. And Varanashram does hand over power to certain people. And in a way in which, at least if Varanashram is implemented, the way it was implemented, there were very few systems of redressal. There were very few systems by which, so the, the kids in the Gurukul, where could they go? Whom could they tell? They were completely taken away from their parents. So my, my only point is that we, sh we should go forward in Varanashram, but how do we ensure, well, of course, as you said, pray to Krishna and have faith in Prabhupada. That's, that's important, of course, and we need to do that. But along with that, over the years, have we come up with some ways to fix the inevitable problems that will come through the centralization of power? So in today's world, uh, with respect to say, we take the question of women or children. Children are abused in their schools. Children are abused in religious institutions also. Uh, and then women, the biggest uh, problems, the biggest assaults or abuses of women happen inside their homes, not on the streets. Although what happens on the street gets publicized more. Statistics indicate that significant amount of abuses happen inside the homes. So when we, in one sense, deliberately disempower women by not giving them education, by not giving them any alternatives and then claim that this is a healthy family because the woman is not, because there is no divorce. Well, we are taking away a person's capacity to have freedom and leaving them with no choices and then creating a system which is saying that the system is stable. Is that really stability? So, so the question is, how do we prevent abuse of power in a system which centralizes power and hands it to people who are likely to abuse it because it's Kaliuga. Therefore, we need Daiva Varnashram with Krishna consciousness in the center. Exactly what are all the answers? I can't say off the top of my head. It, like I say, it requires a group effort. Let all the big leaders come together and think, okay. how can we do it? We yes. can do it. If we're empowered by Srila Prabhupada and Krishna, we will get the answers. That's, but we have to make the resolve that we should do it. Regarding 
giving women freedom. Okay, this is from Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita as it is, which we distribute in huge numbers all over the world. Uh, this is from chapter 16, text 7, a very well-known verse, Pravriting cha nivriting cha janana vidura suraha. Uh, Srila Prabhupada's translation, those who are demoniac do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. Now, this doesn't mention anything about social roles per se. It doesn't mention anything about the roles of women per se. But Srila Prabhupada chooses to use this as an example to demonstrate how demoniac people at the present time do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. And I know that even quoting this, I'm likely to be lampooned and shot down and, and uh, called a, I don't know, demon or whatever. But I'm reading from Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita as it is, which we are making a huge effort in this month, particularly to distribute in huge quantities all over the world. So Srila Prabhupada writes, in the Manu Sanghita, it is clearly stated that a woman should not be given freedom. That does not mean that women are to be kept as slaves, but they are like children. Children are not given freedom, but that does not mean that they are kept as slaves. The demons have now neglected such injunctions, and they think that women should be given as much freedom as men. However, this has not improved the social condition of the world. Actually, a woman should be given protection at every stage of life. She should be given protection by the father in her younger days, by the husband in her youth, and by the grown-up sons in her old age. This is proper social behavior according to the Manu Sanghita. But modern education has artificially devised a puffed up concept of womanly life. And therefore, marriage is practically now an imagination in human society. The social condition of women is thus not very good now, although those who are married are in a better condition than those who are proclaiming their so-called freedom. The demons, therefore, do not accept any instruction which is good for society, and because they do not follow the experience of great sages and the rules and regulations laid down by the sages, the social condition of the demoniac people is very miserable. It's a tough one. It's... it's Hard Maharaj, I mean, for many, many you, people to Maharaj, accept, but it's right there. It's, it's what Srila Prabhupada said. Yes, Maharaj. It's good you brought up this quote. Prabhupada is specifically saying that women should not be treated as slaves. Women should be protected. Now, the main reason... So, that, so let, let's work as a society to do that, to protect no, no, so, children, so, women, so old men, brahmanas so, and cows. Let's, let's work on that. Let's yes, work on that. So whose responsibility is that? The responsibility oh. is of the men to protect the women. But if women... Well, within the family unit, yes, yes. Yeah, but if women find that the men are exploiting them, the men are abusing them, now feminism can have many causes and it is very easy to talk about the problems that feminism has caused. But it's equally important to talk about the problems that led to feminism. And one of the biggest problems was that men were exploitative, men were abusive. So if we, we can't just, uh, women should be protected, but when they don't feel protected, when they objectively they're not protected, even in, in the Western world, domestic violence is still a big problem. Now, of course, there it's are, not only men to women, it's women to men also. No, that is fine. Like, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. But the majority is men to women. Well, so, the majority reported is men to women, but I, I personally know of many examples of so, so, no, Men who have come to me and told me their wives hit them and this and that, and they don't hit them back. Anyway, go on. That's, so, we don't so, want to get too much into all the details. But my point, again, is the same. Let, let us come together and discuss how to implement that. The system that Krishna and Srila Prabhupada have given, we should have the faith that this is a perfect system. Yes, and yes. that if we, if we come together and we really decide that we 
have to do it because Prabhupada wanted it, then Prabhupada will give us the intelligence. It may require a lot of discussion and this and that. Yes, as far as exploitation, uh, yeah, you're saying the men exploit the women, but the problem is the exploitive spirit. Because we see that when women have the, when now the laws are such that women can exploit men, and yes, it happens all the time. There, there are so many, there are so many cases of women. Yeah. They just go and report to the police station something false, and the husband gets arrested. No questions asked. Yes, so it's yes. the exploitive spirit. Now, now in India and in many other countries, women have the upper hand legally, and they use it to to exploit the men. Yes, so it's the exploitive is, spirit. That is it's, true. it's not by making any material adjustment per se that we can destroy the exploited spirit. Krishna consciousness has to be there, which t that should destroy the exploited spirit. Therefore, Daiva Varnashram Dharma has to be Varnashram society with very strongly Krishna consciousness in the center. Yes, Maharaj. I don't have all the, I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I have all the answers, but we should come together and discuss how we can implement it. You're yes. saying that the farms and all this, they don't work, but... No, no, no. I, I never, I didn't say they didn't work. I don't, don't work. I said that when we tried them, there were problems. Oh. I'm not saying... Definitely, that definitely. But yes. on the farms itself, as far as I can see in the Western world, uh, the main reason they didn't work is because devotees, they can earn more money working in the cities. And they, they weren't prepared to... Of course, it's a whole complex social tapestry. Mm. There were guru problems and problems within the movement. But even now, we find that people, we want to bring them to the farm and they say, well, why, why should I... Why should I work so hard to produce potatoes when I can just go and I can work online and in one hour I can I can earn enough money to have enough potatoes for my family for a whole month or a year? So it's a, it's a question of priorities and understanding and what do we want to do with our lives and with the movement and it requires a lot of preaching. I was going to say that in in Hungary we have an example of a pilot Varnashram project. Yes, that's a remarkable. Very, very clearly with the aim that we want to establish Varnashram. And it's been going on how long? I don't know, more than 20 years now. And it's had considerable success. I'm sure there are all kinds of problems, but the very fact that they're running on and they I, they have a, more than 200 devotees living there and been living there for a long time. I'm also overseeing pilot Varnashram projects. And we don't just, just start doing things this way, that way. Okay, let's try this, let's try that. We do put a lot of thought into it and we, and a lot of discussion and seeing Prabhupada's instructions and considering the, the, uh, the nature of the devotees and everything. And there are problems, but something is going on. It is possible to do at some level. Maharaj, yeah. uh, would you like to share something about the international projects that you are overseeing? What you are doing and how you are going about it because uh, that's what ultimately is going to convince that if we have working models and yes, yes. as you said pilot well, projects you so please go and see you're not very far we have one our, our oldest Varnashram project is in Gujarat it's not a very big project it's nothing like uh, Hungary the Hungary project but it's going on there are families there who have been there for some have been there for more than 10 years we have Boys, thank you. Uh, boys who've been through Guru call, the couples getting married. And of course, getting married in India, it's not such a big thing. It's, it's not such a big risk as it is in the West. Mm. Because there's there is increasing divorce in India, but still, by Krishna's grace, the great majority of marriages in India are still people they go into it, and from day one, they're not thinking about a, I can step out of it. So yes. there's, you, you please go and see and give your report from your analytical and very deep uh, it, intellectual understanding. Please, you, you go and talk and, and, and see them and give your, if I say it might sound something like blowing up my own trumpet or something, but you go and see as, as a neutral observer, as a concerned observer, spend some time, talk with the devotees, live with them, one thing I can say is that 
these devotees who have moved there, they were previously in the cities. And in the city, it's very hard for them to... Most of our devotees living in the city, initiated devotees, they don't rise early in the morning by four o'clock. They don't have a full morning program. They don't associate with devotees mostly because they're in the office or whatever. Mm. So it's the, the, the basic situation is not very conducive for manmana bhava madhva, for always thinking of Krishna. But the great advantage of living on our farms, it, it, it's, it's austere, no doubt. It's very austere compared to the comfortable city life. But mentally, it's not austere. It, the, the tension is not there. Um, devotees, they, they rise, Grihastas, they're living at least as regulated and austere life as the average Brahmachari in an ISKCON center. They rise early in the morning every day. They go to Mangalarti, they have a morning program. Actually, at our farms, we don't have a morning class. We have a midday class because if you have to go and work outside, you know, India is a hot climate, right? It's yeah. a cold season now, but most of the year it's, it's hot by seven o'clock in the morning. So they go out early, come back, there's a midday program. And then, then again, they go out. And then in the evening also, there's kirtan and class, arati and class. So in this way, although previously they might have one time a week coming together with devotees for satsang, now they have it three times a day. And the, the, these devotees, they've, they're accepting these austerities very happily because they want to live in a way that they can be Krishna conscious in, in, a, in a way that it's not such a struggle to be Krishna conscious and for their children also. I, I'll tell you that um, one of my disciples, a couple, um, they, yeah, they were instrumental in starting this one community. We, we started, first of all, with just three families. So they were doing that. And I, I visited just when they went there. And then I came back again after some months. Uh, and when I came in, I saw them. And the husband and wife were there. And I said, your faces have become black. And they have become bright. Black from the sun. They're out in the, in the sunshine, in the fresh air. And bright, because even though they were seriously practicing devotees prior to that, they, have, they look so much more happy now that they don't have to struggle in the cities with, with so many, uh, yeah, city life. It's, it's just a struggle. But they're very, very happy to have the opportunity. Naturally, the face becomes bright because they're, they're able to directly do everything in such a way that they can see it's very directly fulfilling Srila Prabhupada's mission. And like I say, they have three times a day satsang, which they might get only once a week in the city. And yeah, they can directly feel I'm contributing to Srila Prabhupada's mission. Whereas in the city, it's hard. You know, if you're, you're, you're working for some boss who's just squeezing you and, and you're working on whatever it is, making some app or something for some, how to sell more, I don't know, how, many, how to sell more bubble gum or something. And uh, you, you give whatever you can for Krishna consciousness. But it, it's hard to feel that connection. Anyway, there's a few words about that. There's so much to say. So much to say. That's amazing. So that is definitely, I mean, I have experienced this. You go to a, especially not just a rural place, but a rural place, uh, but a rural place which is also having a spiritual sanctity to it. It is just the mind calms down so much. Physically, it's tougher, as you said, but it's mentally, it's much easier. So that is a beautiful phrase that we darker externally, but brighter internally. I think that reflects it in a very vivid way. Yes, Maharaj. So we will in, in the in the podcast. Oh, please, I really, I'm I'm not saying that rhetorically. Please, you go and visit. Go and do it quickly before this next round of, of COVID comes and they start, start locking everything down again. <laughs> I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. 
and we will also share the information about the nandagram project here in the youtube description so that devotees can also look at it visitors can also look at it so if i overall understand what you are saying is that yes like in every other initiative that we are trying to spread krishna consciousness there are challenges so even in varanashram there will be challenges sahajan karma kontaya sadosham api natya je yeah you know very well you you know bhagavad gita inside out upside down in every endeavor krishna says there's going to be some fault but one shouldn't give it up because there's going to be some mm-hmm. fault of course we don't try to exacerbate the faults yes we want it to work we don't want to set up a society in, in which is uh oppressive we definitely don't want to do that we definitely want to avoid that and that's why we want to set up daiva varashram dharma which with with krishna very strongly in the center then there won't be there won't be a, an exploitive spirit people have to live together cooperate together we're all we're all working for the greater good which is to live together and serve krishna mm. it sounds as if it's utopian but it can be done it should be done yes maharaj it's so true so ultimate so i think this point of from a material perspective if we analyze varanashram we can come up with so many obstacles and problems but if you look at it there from the pers- but if you look at it from will the perspective be. there of, will be no doubt yeah yeah, yeah but if you look at it from problems. the perspective of daivi varanashram if there is that service attitude instead of the exploited attitude then yeah. as we try to implement then krishna and prabhupad will give us guidance the dami buddhi yogam tam we can say that how we yes, can yes, deal yes. with the obstacles and move forward and uh, implement yeah. some things i see the real problem is the exploitive attitude even theoretically we could go on with the present society as it is and mm-hmm. if everyone was krishna conscious but then if everyone was krishna conscious why would they want to work so hard and make bubble gum it's a, it's a consumer society in which which is based on exploiting the earth and getting ahead at the expense of others and in the companies in the corporations the bottom line is profit and people they can be just laid off and the 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 idea is to get as much out of the employee as possible to squeeze them as much as possible to maximize the profit so the whole basis of present day society it's demoniac it's exploitive so it's this exploitive spirit that let me or my group get ahead at the expense of others but varashram mitigates that because there is no getting ahead in this materially that you you just do you do your swakarma you do whatever you have to do which is part of a system uh village system the barber mm-hmm. has his duty the potter has his duty the tailor has his duty the priest has his duty the teacher has his duty there's no way there's nowhere to go up in terms of economic expansion well maybe there is maybe someone but but that's not the aim the aim isn't to expand and expand and make yourself bigger and bigger the aim is to live peacefully cooperatively with an, with the understanding that human life is meant for god realization so it's it's a very different approach to life actually yes maharaj that's so true in some ways even in our city temples what if, if there is a service attitude we do experience some relief from the torment of material existence even the cities So oh, of course yeah if there's krishna consciousness then everything is perfect but yes, it's yes. just that the the current society is just the antithesis of that it it's based on exploitation and competition and and with the idea that human life is meant for sense gratification you only live once <laughs> it's based on ignorance isn't it yes my right that is so true so these two things have to go on side by side the preaching has to go on and educate people that human life is meant for god realization uh we, we we've attained this human birth after many many births we should utilize that for krishna consciousness i i know it's i i have experience also preaching in the western world some experience and it can be very very difficult even to 
broach such subjects, but uh, such subjects as hierarchical society. But that's that's also nonsense because every society is hierarchical. The, the attempts to have egal completely egalitarian societies, they've failed. Neither, neither communism isn't completely. It, it, it was supposed to be. It didn't work. The so-called democracy, everyone's supposed to have equal rights, but they, it's not. So, yeah, uh, hierarchy is unavoidable. It's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. But it should be. It should be that leader servant, right? Everyone sees him. The king sees himself as the servant of Krishna and takes a leadership role in service to Krishna, in service to facilitate. The service of others. It's a matter of attitude, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Pratap Rudra was like that. He was sweeping the sweeping yeah. the in front of Lord Jagannath's car. Yes, yes. the greatest sweeper in the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's it's a fact that at the present time, even to talk about such things, it it can be very difficult with a with a large segment of the population. So. I'm aware of that. And I'm not saying that we, we should go out and tell everyone, you have to surrender to Krishna and women have to become completely subordinate to the men. And we, we don't start our preaching like that, do we? Mm. <laughs> but at least among ourselves, we should have a clear understanding of what can actually benefit the world and how we have to move toward that. And we also have to bear in mind that we're bringing women into Krishna consciousness. We want to bring them in and men from the present society. And they won't, they may not accept these ideas very easily. But at the same time, we can't change our teachings to suit them. We can make adjustments, but we can't change the core teachings. Otherwise, if we if we say that. Well, what are we going to say? That the statements in Srila Prabhupada's books, they don't apply, or they're meant for another time and place and circumstance. What do we say? We we have to be we have to be able to elucidate or explain these um, these concepts to people who are at least a bit open-minded. And for that we need preaching, we need Harinam. We need book distribution, we need festivals, we need prasadam distribution, and then people can start to appreciate, start to become purified, and very carefully, no doubt, we have to introduce these topics. And if we do have farms running on that principle, yes, uh, then people will be more convinced. I remember seeing this must have been early 1980s. There was a, there was a program on Australian TV showing our devotees at New Govardhan Farm. This was when this was in the heyday of Krishna consciousness in Australia, which happened in the early 1980s when Baba Ananda Goswami was the Zonla Acharya there. Unfortunately, yeah, the history didn't work out as it was hoped, to put it euphemistically. But on, on that program that said that... Uh, they interviewed women, young Australian women raised in Australian society. This is the 1980s. It might be somewhat different in the 2020s. But they they said that the interviewer said, "Well, don't you don't you feel?" I can't remember exactly what they said, but they they said, "Don't you feel there's something wrong in taking a submissive role?" And they said. No, we feel we're protected. That's what they said. And then, unfortunately, that didn't continue. But, but the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, at least what I've learned from Srila Prabhupada, I, 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 I'm not married. There's actually all this Van Ashram implementation. We really need to bring in the Grihastas. You're, you're a lifelong Brahmachari for many, many years. I was a Brahmachari. Now I'm a sannyasi. We really need to bring in the Grihastas. They can tell better than us in many ways, what needs to be done. But what I understand from Srila Prabhupada, that um, women, it's the, their nature is that they like to serve, they like to be protected, 
And if we do have first-class men, Srila Prabhupada said, our guru calls are meant for training first-class men. And we can pair them with girls who are prepared to be submissive to them. Again, not slaves, but that basic role. You know you're raised in an Indian family. It's, you know what it is. It works very naturally. When we talk about it all theoretically, it might not seem to work, but it, it works because there's a... You've seen, <laughs> of course, yeah, you've seen. Yeah. the husband and wife work together and they're different, they're different relationships in every husband and wife relationship. But basically, the husband and wife, they work cooperatively, but there's an understanding that the wife, she takes a somewhat submissive role. And it may be that in public, she's more strong with the husband, but at least that yeah. that that etiquette is kept and it works practically it works even today it works yes maharaj i see i mean what you said is it's it's uh, two things you first you said that we can't speak these things publicly without with that the first thing we speak but there are ways of explaining this in an age even people today can appreciate yeah there are a, we we should we should work on that at least. yeah yeah so it that, can be very tough i i know it's it can be very yeah, tough i'm not yeah, denying that at all yes mm. in one sense uh, it's a uh, like you said also that in every indian family in the family is working the family has their own dynamic there are some broad principles exactly but exactly. they have their own you got dynamic. the right term yeah you got yes, the right, right term. so yes so in one yeah. sense if wherever a person is whether they are whether there are they are in a part of pilot farm communities or established farm communities, or they have to live in the cities. If the exploitative attitude could be replaced by the service attitude, then then even whatever situation um, male is, female is, whatever the roles they have, they will be able to work cooperatively. And then in that sense, Krishna consciousness yes. is the ultimate solution. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole spirit that we, we have a higher aim, a higher goal. So my own, that's another part of the modern Western society that everyone is individualism. I have to act for my own interest. But when we, we, we sacrifice that to act as part of the whole, that it's not just what I want, but I have to act in a way that is conducive to the welfare of all. So, yeah, yes, please. Yeah. yeah, actually, there is an increasing recognition also that in the West, there is so much loneliness coming up. And people want to belong to some group or the other. And sometimes they take up activism for some trivial causes and they become passionately. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That sense of belonging could be channeled in a more healthy way. Yes, and, yes, 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 yes. Yes, Maharaj. That's, that's human tendency to want to, a sense of belonging. And even uh, they used to say in the 1970s when psychologists were studying this new the new cults of which... Krishna consciousness was considered a new cult in America. And they said that one of the reasons people join is that sense of belonging, which, which may have been a factor also. Oh, okay. Yes. That is. So if, so we could say that Varanashram also gives much more than a sense of belonging. It gives a sense of purpose also, because that is ultimately the purpose. Yeah, yeah. Of is yeah, yeah. And like you're saying, people take up activism because they feel they have a purpose. Yeah. That is something, fun. something, something better. So they want to, they want to make society better. They're, yeah. they're feeling that they're involved in something to make society better. And even if you have, in in America at the present time, as you know, who doesn't know, the whole society is so polarized. But on both sides, you have the woke camp at the extreme on one side, and then the far right wing Christians, whoever they may be on the other side, but they both feel that they're part of a broader movement to improve society. Isn't it? That point you yes. made. Yeah. That is so true. And both of them are not only convinced that our vision is right, but they consider even the other vision, opposite vision to be not just wrong, but evil. And that yeah. is far greater polarization than just simply a difference of opinions. Yes, yes, yes. So, so why don't we give an alternative? <laughs> Our yes. devotees, they were in Northern Ireland. This was again early 1980s, I believe it was. And Northern Ireland at that time, 
it's, it hasn't stopped completely, but at that time, it was very much divided between Catholics and Protestants. And they were saying, well, why not try something else? Krishna consciousness. <laughs> there's, there's another way to go. Okay. One, one god brother of mine told me he was in Ukraine around the time when it was very chaotic. In fact, Ukraine, I don't think it's one of the most difficult countries in Europe. It hasn't stopped being socially chaotic in some ways. But in the, in the period following the separation from the Soviet Union, the, the whole country was at a crossroads. Where do we go now? And my one god brother told me he was able to meet, I don't know whether it was the political leaders of the country or intellectual leaders, uh, and or maybe it was some years afterwards. And, but he said, look, communism didn't work. Capitalism isn't working for you. Why don't you try something else? Varnashram. And this is what he told me, that they said to him, okay, tell us all about it. And then he was stumped. He didn't know what to tell them. Oh, God. So, so really what we need, we really, these two things need to go on side by side. Book distribution and the endeavor to make farm communities. Side by side, we have to preach very strongly and, and introduce into people's minds. First of all, we're not these bodies. Human life is short, but it's, uh, it's artism. It's, it's a nitya. It's very short, but it's, it has a very specific purpose. So on one side, preaching has to go on. And yes, let the, let the young women who are coming to Krishna consciousness in the Western world, they, they have that missionary spirit. Yes, should a prophet engage them? Yes, let them go out, distribute books. But there will come a time when they want to settle down. And then we also have to have arrangement. They can go to the farms. Let us have that also. So both, both prongs have to be there. Now, in one sense, if we have models that make it work, many, many devotees and many, many new people will also take it up because the city so, life does, yeah. does fry people out very easily. I believe so, yeah. And of course, everybody may not move out from the cities, but still, if there is at least a demonstrable alternative, then, then that will attract, that will have a significant yes, yes. number of people will be attracted. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And also there is an increasing awareness, even people who are not necessarily spiritually minded or Krishna conscious, even they are talking about sustainability and harmony with ecology. And well, they're not just talking about it, they're doing it, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're, there they're are so many people who are, are actually doing it. Yeah. With nothing, they, they may have never heard of Krishna consciousness. But yes. They're, they're going to the land. Mostly they go off the grid, which means they produce electricity from solar power or something like that. Yes. And so they want, to, they want to have the best of both worlds. <laughs> but our, our, our idea is something, we have, we have another vision altogether, that living on the land is not the be-all and end-all, yes. but it is to facilitate the ultimate, to, to facilitate the sadhana, and to facilitate the society which helps us individually and collectively to God consciousness. Yes, Manaj. Otherwise, farming, it's, it's, we're not farmers per se. It's, it's yeah. not that farming is, or living on the land is, it's not, our, it's not our main message, but it is the idea that Srila Prabhupada gave us. And Krishna gave us, Krishi, well, Krishi go Raksha Varnijam, that is the, Economic basis, it's in Bhagavad Gita, that we, we, we need food. That's our first necessity. So Krishna consciousness is the, the actual core message of Bhagavad Gita. But socially, it's Varnashram. Bhagavad Gita, as you know, Swakarma, it's all about Swakarma. Yes. Swakarma nitanam shreyaha, all these things. Swakarma means within Varnashram. Yes. Uh, of course, to some extent, even within without Varanashram, also people try to gravitate toward their Swakarma, but it's very difficult for them to find it. And people get caught in jobs which are not compatible to their nature. And in that sense, Oh, that's another point, isn't it? Yeah, that's another that's another reason why people are so unhappy in the modern world, is most people are working, if they have a job at all, 
they're working in a job which they don't like. They don't like to do it. Yes. But it, but Van Ashram gives that opportunity. People they're able to do. They're able to act according to their propensity, and that's why it's flexible. That someone may be born in a family of shudras, but he can become a brahmana, and someone may be born in a family of brahmanas, and he may become a shudra by by vritti. If his pravritti is such, then he can follow that vritti. He doesn't have to be forced to be a brahmana. So mm. it is flexible. Yes, Maharaj. It's complex, no doubt, but I'm sure it can be done because Srila Prabhupada wanted it. And Srila Prabhupada is such a powerful Acharya. See what he did. And if Srila Prabhupada said he wanted it, that means Krishna wanted it. Because Srila Prabhupada's in, in contact with Krishna. He does what Krishna wants, what Krishna tells him. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. So Srila Prabhupada said there's another famous quote that one cannot suddenly change a community's social customs. Shall I read that one? That's a famous quote. Yes, Maharaj, that's there. So, okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, no. okay, you say. I'm, I'm blabbering most here, so you can say something. No, no, no. So, 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 I mean, this is a very, you know, what I have understood from you is that there's a lot of breadth in the vision that while we need to, say, reach out to people where they are at present in society through book distribution and various other programs, at the same time, we also need to, so at one level, Krishna consciousness needs to be presented to people so that wherever they are, whatever social situation, professional situation, family situation, they can take Krishna consciousness. But if they want to take it more, more, you could say holistically, have opportunity to practice Krishna consciousness at a greater time in a greater conducive atmosphere, then that option also needs to be presented. So, Well, I actually said that in our previous talk, didn't I? That yes, there, yes. There's still an emergency and both things have to go on side. I use that term side by side. I've read Prabhupada's books and I've seen how much Prabhupada emphasized Varanashram. So my, my intent was never to oppose it. My intent was just to, how are we going to address the, the challenges that are likely to come and the challenges that have come in our past impurities? And you have answered that now that we need to have that Devi Varanashram. We need to have that freedom from exploitative attitude. That's what, that is going to, yeah. it's not a so, one it, it's not a one man's job that someone sits and says everything. Let us all come together and discuss and let it, let us see, especially I'm saying in, that Shiva Maharaj is doing it in the Western world. Hungary is not exactly the same as America. That's true, but it is very different from India, but he's able to, he's been able to do something and develop it and sustain it. So let's ask him and the devotees who are with him. And, uh, and work on it. That's that's my suggestion. That's all. Yes, Maharaj. So sh shall I read that quote from the Adi Leela, Srila Prabhupada's purport, that famous yes, one, and give a little critique of that? Yes, Sometimes jealous persons criticize the Krishna consciousness movement because it engages equally both boys and girls in distributing love of Godhead. Not knowing that boys and girls in countries like um, Europe and America mix very freely. These fools and rascals criticize the boys and girls in Krishna consciousness for intermingling. But these rascals should consider, Prabhupada used the word rascals, right? Very strong word. But these rascals should consider that one cannot suddenly change a community's social customs. However, since both the boys and the girls are being trained to become preachers, those boys and girl, those girls are not uh, ordinary girls, but are as good as their brothers. Business activities is a business movement. Now, um, Srila Prabhupada says, not knowing that boys and girls in countries like Europe and America mix very freely. Now, clearly, Srila Prabhupada was not in favor of boys and girls mixing very freely. We find from his letters that he said. He, in one of his letters, Srila Prabhupada said that even if I tell you not to, you will mix. And therefore, I've, I'm instituting marriage. So Srila Prabhupada didn't think that the social milieu in Europe and America was very good. But he made the adjustment saying that one cannot suddenly change a community's social customs, which indicates to me that he did want to change the community's social customs, but that he... He's saying you can't suddenly do it. 
And he says that to engage both boys and girls in fully transcendental activities is a policy intended to spread the Krishna consciousness movement. So it's a policy. It, it may not be the ultimate goal to continue with a society mm. that promotes or allows free mixing of boys and girls. In one place, Srila Prabhupada says that the main aim of Varnashram is to stop the free... To, no, no, sorry. I, I should have found that. In, uh, that the, the main aim of Varnashram is to curb the sex desire, which comes from mingling is one of... The sex desire is there in the heart, but by mingling, it becomes increased. Uh, there is one, it's in, in Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 6, Text 3. Srila Prabhupada writes that we have found it very difficult. Chapter 6, Text 3, yeah. Srila Prabhupada said, we have found in our Krishna conscious movement, it's very difficult to disassociate ourselves from women. Now, I don't take that to mean that Srila Prabhupada wants to ban women from the Krishna conscious movement, but that this, this point of free mixing, that Srila Prabhupada was not in favor of that. Yes, uh, as, as traditional religious cultures all over the world, uh, none of them are in favor of free mixing of, of men and women because they know that this is a cause of, they may, they may uh, explain it in different ways, but it's a cause of uh, developing or exacerbating the bestial tendencies which are antithetical to pure living and God consciousness. So if I understand right, what you're saying is the exacerbation of the sensual desires can also be avoided if there is Varanashram. Where, so is that the point you're making or means? That, that, is, a, that is an important point also, yeah. Then we, we do revert to a more traditional setup in which uh, there is... There is a, a, a separation and there is a, a mindset of, of j just like in any, in any religious culture in, throughout the world, a man doesn't look at women. If he's out on the street and women are there, he doesn't look at them and they don't dress in such a way that they will invite that. Now, if you even say that nowadays, you're going to get eggs thrown in your face. But that is human culture. And, and, uh, and so uh, even if you go in someone's home in traditional, in, not only in India, in so many countries, the, the, if a man, say the friend of a man comes and the woman, the women may not come in their presence. They, they won't come in the presence of, of a, a man who's not related to them, unless either on their, yeah. either on their husband's side or their father's side. That was the culture. They may come in and, and just bring some tea or something like that, but they they go away again. So that was the culture. It was and there was there was a purpose to that. And that's nowadays that's called misogynistic to even say that. But it's a it's a system to to protect both men and women from bestial bestiality. Mm. Yeah, that is true. I mean, in, as you said, the, today's society is so complex that it is that kind of like in the in Afghanistan when the Taliban was early in the early 2000s, they were in rule. They mandated yeah. that no women should work. But then what had happened was most of the breadwinners, the men were wounded or killed. And the women were the only breadwinners at that time. And the, the family started starving and the Taliban said that, no, Allah will provide. Well, and the families were starving and the international relief agencies were protesting. So you know, there has to, for that kind of uh, system to work also, there has to be some basic sustainable or I mean, basic social supportive environment has to be there. And say, if, if we live in a world where, where if the financial situation is also so complicated that sometimes unless both men and women work, husband and wife work, they can't sustain. Not always, but in many situations. Then and go to the farm. <laughs> yes, women have to work there also it's not that women don't work it's not that they're just sitting around chanting Hare Krishna mm, yes, yes. <laughs> the work is there in the potter's family the wife is helping and the, 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 the women will be in the fields also in the, in the brahmana's family the, the wife is also it's f fully engaged helping him in his brahminical duties everywhere 
Yes, my that's find that Dropadi. She was she was she was overseeing the household, but what a household. It was <laughs> the guests, guests coming all the time, kings from different countries. She was overseeing so many servants, including men. So it's it's not the work is there, but there's a yes, there's a system to do it in such a way mm. that the bestial nature is not inflamed. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, just a few, a week or two ago, I had a podcast with Urmila Mataji on, so she was, she had this very interesting point that before the industrial revolution, women were able to live in such a way that they could also do the varana without inter interfering with their ashram. She quoted something similar to what Prabhupada said, that the potter or the weaver, the husband, the wife, the children, they would all be doing the weaving. Ashram means grihastra ashram for women. So the ashram, the way she was saying, ashram means family duties. Varana means more of say, like professional duty or one's interests or one's, the side of doing something uh, according to one's interests, one's inclinations, one's nature. So many women could take care of their family responsibilities and also do, they would come, contribute in the farm, they could contribute in the... Yeah, that, I was just saying that, wasn't no, it? No, yeah. So we were or whatever they were there. But what her point was that after the industrial revolution, three things happened. The work went out of the home. Then second was that the joint family structure disintegrated because people went away from their homes to na their native places to other places for working. And also as machines became more and more, people didn't have so many servants. So women had to basically choose between Varana and Ashram that because the workplace was far away, the office was somewhere. So then because of biological necessity of having children, they were forced, they chose Ashram. And then what the feminist liberation movement says, they said, oh, women were suppressed that they had to, that they, they were forced to take care of the family and not take care, not, not had no space for the interest. And they say, now we have space for the interest. But then today's feminism women are being more, more pressured to choose their varana at the cost of their ashram. And that wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the woman's varana follows that of her husband, right? The woman works in the field if her husband's working in the field. She helps the potter if her husband's a potter. It's I, In the Western world, it's not exactly the same, is it? Um, Anyway, what's the point? The, 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 the feminism, they, they said, what no, was no, that? No, the, I was just making the, the, the What is Sorry. it? The Feminine Mystique, that was the groundbreaking book that, that was saying that, well, if you just stay at home, you'll get bored because there's nothing to do. You have to get out and you have to develop your own opportunities. Yeah, that might have been also part of it. But the point I was making is that you know, the, what you were earlier saying that we are not creating a system of so, oppression. So, so the point she was making is that when people feel that uh, she's also very much supportive of uh, the idea of farm or simple living and uh, having an extended family together. So her point was that when people today feel that going back means women will be shut down, that women will not be having any opportunity to grow that actually that women having to choose their ashram over their varana instead of varana over their ashram either way that itself is a false polarity and before the industrial revolution whether it was india or whether it was the west women could take care of varana and ashram both together so in to me it seems you're making this whole thing far too complex the first thing is the goal of human life is to develop krishna consciousness put that yeah, first and, and then the social system follows and what I feel and what I want to do, that becomes subordinated to what I have to do to cooperate with my family, either as a husband or a wife, uh, within the broader society, so that we can all become Krishna conscious. And if we think what I want to do all the time, then I don't know, because you're, you're obviously I mean, you're putting you're putting complex things in a very simple way, which is which is inevitable. But no, I want to do is different from what what is my nature to do. Krishna says that one cannot give up on Swabhava. So yeah, it, but the uh, but so in, just in, in the Swabhava, in the traditional Varnashram system, the women, they they follow their husband, don't they? It's it is not that the husband is. 
He's a Brahmana and, and the wife is a uh, acting in public dramas or something uh -huh. like that. There may be women acting in public. Actually, they didn't, as Prabhupada said. Or, uh, okay, here's another one. Traditionally, we find in Indian society that the, 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 wife of, the wife of a fisherman in certain communities in Bombay, the wife of the fisherman would go to the fish market and sell the fish. Yes. While the men catch the fish and the women go and sell them. Okay, that's what they do. I don't think they think very much about what I want to do. They're just thinking of surviving. That's, well, they're not even thinking of surviving. It's just what they do. They're just, they don't think that much about it. Um, yeah, in one sense. The whole question of what I want to do, that arises very much in the sense gratificatory society where everyone is programmed from the beginning. You've got to do the, you've got to be, make the best of your life. But basically, it's a completely different approach to life that you just do your do what you're supposed to do. And we add to that Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So it's a different approach altogether. Yeah, that is true. I mean, the, in the past, the marriages would also happen in such a way that the husband and wife would have the same varana. So yeah, it's yeah, very yeah, difficult yeah, to yeah, yeah. replicate or even conceive how it would have actually happen. Well, I don't know if it's so difficult. Like if it's even going on in India today. They, they're trying to talk about how bad and we have to stop caste and all this kind of thing. But still we find, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, who's that? Ola. Ola is this company, right? What's Ola? They do taxis. What is it they do? And now they made a factory in Hosur, just outside Bangalore, for making for making electric scooters or something like that. So who's who's the uh, who's the CEO? Who's the brains behind this company? His name is Bavish. Wait for it, Agarwal. <laughs> it's an Agarwal. It's it's not a traditional business, but he's got that that swabhav. Yes. To do business. And then I saw there's another company, Zometa. And uh, I just saw in the Google feed, I didn't, in the news, that Zometa, one of the founders of Zometa was it home delivery food or something. He was resigning or something. What was his name? Goel. And again, it's your Agarwal Maheshwari clan. They've got business in their blood. It's not a traditional business. Mm -hmm. But then they naturally gravitate and arm so that we can have these discussions and we're not under communist China. Uh, so uh, who joins? Sikhs, Nepali Gurkhas, and then we have uh, Jats, who are not yes. officially Kshatriyas, but they are by spirit. Jadejas from Gujarat. From Maharashtra, you have what? What caste is there in Maharashtra? Marathas. It's not the, uh, the Marathas. No, it's not the it's not the Patils, right? The Marathas, yes. Yeah, so it's and then naturally they they that still. Srila Prabhupada writes that Varnashram can easily be reestablished in India, because still there's, there's even if you say now anyone can go in the temple. Previously, the so-called Harijans, as Mahatma Gandhi called them, now they're called Dalits. They weren't. They were. They were. They were what the Asprisha and the the Chandals and everything. They're allowed to go in the temples in Tirupati and Rameshram and everywhere. But who? They don't go much. It's mostly the caste people who go. Mm. <laughs> when when you when you convert the Christians and the Muslims when they convert they do it caste wise. They know if if you get the head of the the head of the village of one caste or the head of then everyone comes. So it's still very, it's still very much there. I'm living, I've been living in uh, Velo, in, in a village just outside Velo. And, I, and all around in this area, there, there are two communities which are prominent. One is the Gondas and the other is, I can't remember, maybe, some, maybe the Yadavas. But anyway, they're both, both of the, they all find they have their house. They have one, you know, actually you, at least two, three cows. They do a little, they have a little land. They do a little farming. They're content with that. They have to have cows. They'll, they'll keep cows. They'll do farming. And it's just what they've done for so many years, for generations. Mm. And they, they, they have a very strong sense of caste identity, which is not conducive for Krishna consciousness per se, but for, for uh, social cohesion and how people, just, just like a, a boy is born in that caste, and then what's he going to do? He's going to do 
What's he going to do? He has his future chalked out. He, he's, what's he going to do in the future? What his father, what his grandfather did, which is he's going to have a few cows, he's going to have a little land, and he's going to marry a girl from the same caste. And she's, she knows her job also because from the age of four or five, that they, they start to take out the cows. Yeah. I see them every day because I'm living right in the village. The little kids, the, from the very beginning, they're, com- they're, they, they're with the cows and they, and they know how to handle them. And it's just completely natural for them. They're not thinking, oh, I should do something. Well, now that's coming because of modern education. Uh, but otherwise, th- th- that's, that's there. They're quite happy with that. Yeah. In the past, actually, the concept of autonomy itself was not that emphasized. He says, a lot you talk about individualism and autonomy. In the past, it was people also, we could say, in some ways, life was uh, simpler, but in some ways, life was tougher also. People didn't have so many options, whether it was educational or professional. And they well, didn't tougher, have- tougher. Uh, maybe it's tougher now where, where you're uh, mentally always in anxiety. What should I should be doing? Uh, Can I, I get a job? I mean, previously, people didn't have this anxiety. Can I get a job? The potter's son becomes a potter. Finished. Yeah, that is true. At, in, the, sense, uh, the, in today's the, world, the merchant's son becomes a merchant. Yeah, freedom yeah. brings with it its own burden. I can become anything I want, but then what do I become? Well, that's also a myth that you can become anything you want. And yeah, look so, at this reserva- now, this is controversial. Look at the reservation system. But it, it doesn't automatically make people have the yeah. inclination. It doesn't automatically make people more intelligent. And there are equal opportunities theoretically for education and everything. Actually, if, as you know, for the upper castes, it's very difficult to, because of the reservation system, it's difficult for them to get ahead educationally, but still they get ahead, even yes. though they're penalized for, for their birth. We have, a, we have a reverse caste system going on in India. It's not, it's not that the, the so-called democracy is equal to everyone. You're penal, nowadays, you're penalized for being born in a so-called high caste, which is actually a burden. And yeah. then they work harder and they work hard and they have that culture to study anyway, and in the Brahmin caste especially. They yeah. have that culture to study and, and they're forced to, to work hard from the beginning just so that they can survive practically. Otherwise, they, they, where are the jobs? Because they're all reserved. That is true. Actually, in one sense, we can never get away from some kind of system of differentiation, even we call equality. I was in Princeton. This e- equality, it's, it's no, so, so it doesn't spiritually work. on the spiritual platform, yes. Agreed, agreed fully. Man. It's a great myth propagated. Who was the first? Karl Marx? Was he the first? Or in the, the idea that we're all equal. It's a great myth. Yeah, I mean. Is, 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 this, really, is the son of uh, Elon Musk, is he born equal to someone born in, a, in Harlem, in, yeah. uh, in Manhattan, or even upper Manhattan and lower Manhattan? Are, are they the, do they have the same opportunity from the beginning? Definitely not. That is true. Basically, what we meant by equality was equality before the law, that a person should not be so there are many aspects to it, Maharaj. But it's also hardly there, is it? Yeah, it's Maharaj. This has been a very, uh, very productive discussion, and uh, thank you for your time. Should I try to summarize? Usually, I try to do that in the few. Yes, minutes. yes, please do, please do. It's Maharaj, thank you. So we discussed broadly today about uh, implementing Varanashram, and then we start started by how do we know that there are. That's a, that emergency instructions and standard instructions. So you give some quotes about how Prabhupada said, right now we're operating in emergency and now we should become more cautious. So we have been trying various things. So broadly becoming cautious means Prabhupada gives certain instructions and those instructions were more of uh, more in harmony what was, with what was done traditionally in Indian society. It was more in harmony with, with the way Varnashram was implemented. So with respect to that, when we discussed there is an emergency, maybe worse emergency in today's world in the West, as well as inside our movement to some extent. And you talked about how book distribution and farms, this could be the, that's what Prabhupada emphasized. And book distribution is going on and we discuss about how farms, uh, they've not been done so much. And we discuss various reasons, maybe in, the movement has not emphasized it. Maybe our past experiments didn't work out. But just because they didn't work out doesn't mean that we stopped trying. 
just as various other things also had problems devotees leaving coming and leaving or even the guru system we we work to fix those things so similarly varanashram we need to there will be problems in, as geeta says every endeavor is covered by fault so we have to discuss and we have to try and then because prabhupada emphasizes so much in prabhupada by prabhupada and krishna's mercy things will we will be able to do it and you give the example of hungary what is going on and is be going on for more, for more than decades now and you have also doing things and how devotees as you said there blacker externally but brighter internally so overall this is if we offer an alternative to the complicated and uh, complicated life that has become in cities then people will be attracted to it and then we discuss various issues about the the problem primarily is but even if the varanashram has had problems of say abuse of power that is because of the exploitative mentality and that exploitative mentality can be dealt with by the by the devi varanashram by krishna consciousness and then without that exploitative mentality even in cities also people can become krishna conscious although they may not be able to practice in that focused way and then with respect to that once we talked about the exploitative mentality then we discussed uh, about various aspects of how shri prabhupad while focusing on uh, by, by while Pra- shri prabhupad wanted that while prabhupad adjusted things he said that yeah we can't change things suddenly but that means that he did want things to be changed gradually and now how exactly to do that we don't want to create an oppressive society we want that everybody should be engaged uh, everybody should be satisfied and everybody say man women children everybody should be centered on krishna and should be happy now how exactly to go about doing that that will require discussion deliberation and as we keep trying if he has a one thing i should say also experimentation uh, that's a fact okay experimentation yes it's a risk there's no doubt yes maharaj but the alternative is mrityu sansara vartmane if we don't have faith in prabhupads and krishna's instructions then we just have to go back to the materialistic society which prepares us Or, or, or which is takes us if we follow the natural course of that society to hell. So really, it's our duty to Sri La Prapa to yeah, think, and that, in that connection to try to implement this. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. So in that connection, that's one important thing I didn't say. It is experimental. Let, let's be clear about that. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, thing. And then we discuss also about how today's the problems get aggravated because of free mixing. and within the varanashram also one or not just varanashram but every traditional society regulated that and uh, the idea of equality itself it is not it is at a spiritual level it is true but at a material level it is not true and the uh, emphasis rather than on equality creating equality at the material level like we discussed about the reservations also that doesn't really make people equal in ability people in particular dynasties do have particular natural abilities whether they be intellectual administrative or martial it may be cultural it may be cultural it may be cultural it's, it's strong and it's going on still yeah so both you could say both the genealogy as well as the cultural upbringing both contribute to that and then in vanse varanashram it it gives a predictable life trajectory for children also rather than having to worry what i will what profession i'll have so it creates a greater level of stability at the material level and then spirituality can also bhakti can be pursued in a more focused way Thank you very much, Maharaj, for your time and sharing your wisdom. Humble obeisances, Jai Shri Ram. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Vancha kalpa thuru bhas chakri pa sindhu bhi eva chapati ta nam pavane bhio Vaishnavi bhio namo namaha Hare Krishna.